When you're starting the journey to purchase your first home, you're inundated with so much information. And unfortunately, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions out there which could discourage you from buying a home or completely take you off the path. But what if you had an industry insider there to help you show you the real information that you need to know about buying a home and getting a mortgage? Someone who's gone through the process thousands of times. That is what I'm here to do today in our lesson. I want to dispel the top myths and misconceptions from home buyers so you have accurate information when it comes to buying your next property. And why do you think there's so much misinformation out there? So I think the big reason that there's misinformation is because there's so many different sources that people are getting news right now and getting information. And that's not correct because every single transaction is different. Every single mortgage is different. The other thing that I want to address on that, Gary, is selective hearing. People only hear what they want to hear or what's important to them, right? Right, right? Another thing about the mortgage and real estate industry that's different from other industries is that there's constant change. When I say constant, I mean there's daily and weekly changes, sometimes multiple daily changes when it comes to mortgage rates, when it comes to loan programs that are available and whatnot. What what do you think some of the big myths are, though, maybe when it comes to interest rates, let's say? The misinformation out there, the misconception out there, and the big myth around interest rates that I want to dispel right now is that not one size does not fit all. And the truth is that the lowest interest rate almost every time comes at the highest cost. The lowest interest rate is not always the best interest rate because I've seen loan estimates from mortgage lenders all over and they'll show this super low rate and then the consumer looks at, gosh, I'm getting this 5% rate. But when we peel that onion back and we uncover the layers, what's actually happening is that the lender is charging an excessive amount of fees, points, discount points, origination charges. They're charging that extra in order to give you the lower rate. All right, Rob, same question, but now for VA loans. VA loans are one of my top products that I'm passionate about because it's pretty much the best mortgage in the country. I actually heard a statistic that most veterans don't even get VA loans. They get regular conventional loans. Why? Because of the misinformation out there. They think that you can only do something one time with a VA loan. So the other thing is, if you have a loan from the VA on a home and then you need to move because you're a military member and you get a permanent change of station orders. Another big factor that stops a lot of veterans from taking advantage of this amazing loan program is they think that if I've had a foreclosure, a short sale, a bankruptcy, I'm not going to be eligible for that loan. The VA won't take me on as a borrower if I had one of these credit events. The last big myth about VA loans, and this is probably the number one myth Mm. around this loan, is that VA loans are harder to get than other loans. VA loans are actually easier to get than (laughs) other mortgages. I wanted to spell that right now. VA has more flexible guidelines on debt-to-income ratio than any other loan program. They're more flexible when it comes to these credit events, short sales, bankruptcies, foreclosures, and things of that nature. Are there certain misconceptions or myths even that people have about the mortgage process Let's say when they're buying a new home. Yeah, a lot of people actually step back and get afraid from proceeding with buying a home or starting the process. So there is a lot of paperwork that's involved. But if you have a good advisor, a good mortgage loan officer up front that's guiding you through this process, they can help. Put that checklist together up front so you know exactly what you're going to need from the get-go. We can get all that paperwork up front. And then through the process, there's very little required because we did all that legwork in the beginning. The next thing is automation in the mortgage process. Now, if you work for a major company, most of the time we can get an automated employment verification just in the click of a button and get your entire employment history. The last thing is that the meeting a style for your mortgage application. We can do it in the style that you are most comfortable with. If you want to come meet, great. If you want to do things electronically, that's fine too. But we can customize that to you and what you want to do. What about accessing home equity? So the first thing is that some people believe that you actually cannot access the equity in your home at all unless you sell it. So one of the other misconceptions around accessing home equity is that 
the only way to get it is to use a second mortgage or a home equity line of credit. And that's not accurate either. You can do a cash out refinance. Last thing is the use of home equity is reckless. So a lot of people have been taught and it's been passed down, especially from our parents and grandparents, that using the money in your home for anything is pretty much a reckless endeavor. It's not smart. It doesn't make sense. And you're robbing your future. What about a misconception about the current housing market? Number one is it's a bad time to buy. Oh, the rates are high. The price are high. Bad time to buy. That's not true. My top investors are actually buying homes right now. People with multi-million dollar net worths are buying homes at seven, eight percent plus interest rates. Why? Because they're making money on the price of the home. The house that was 250 last year, they're picking it up for 210 right now. They're making their money on the buy. They'll refinance or restructure that mortgage in the future when ultimately the rates come down. We just don't know. Is that a year from now? Is that five years from now? But at some point, there's going to be that opportunity. Another thing is, especially first time buyers are going, the market's going to crash. I'm just going to sit here and wait until the market crashes. Absolutely false. The market is not going to crash. Rates are not too high. You don't want to wait to buy because of the rate. Cause like I said, you can swap it out. And the last misconception is buyers overcomplicate how the mortgage process is going to work. <laughs> Hopefully now you see that buying a home doesn't have to be that scary. You just need the right team and the right advisor to help you dispel these myths and get the right information that's timely and accurate. If you found value in today's lesson, go ahead and share this with someone else who may also like it. And also, if it's your first time watching, hit that subscribe button and smash the bell so you get notified on all of our future content. We're going to be putting out lots more information and educating you guys on everything to do with mortgage, real estate, and personal finance. Now, I do offer personal consultations. So if I can be of assistance to you or someone else you may know, reach out to me directly by call, text, or private message. 860-413-3938. As always, I hope that helps, and we'll see you next time.